time for the second best of three here at the GSL Code, a round of 48. Of course, I'm with Calder as always. Yep. And we have uh, Terran versus Protoss, another one. To the left side of Antigua Shipyard, game number one in this best of three, we have the Startail player. It is Bomber. Yep. Really great player, been playing for Startail, representing them for a long time. He's up against someone who's been for Prime for a while. Uh, really fitting for his name, in fact, because he is classic. Yep, Bomber versus Classic is our game today, and I have to say that I feel really happy for Bomber these days. He's one of the most hardworking players in the Starty lineup, and uh, I've been pretty good friends with him. And it was always quite sad that the most important games that he played in the GSL, he always seemed to lose. But then he went to MLG, and even though he lost the series to Scarlet and dropped into the loser bracket, he ended up third at the tournament, did really well, went to Lone Star Clash and finished second, so I was really happy to see Bomber do that well. It's, it's actually pretty cool, he deserves it, he deserved it for a long time, and uh, he struggled for a long time as well, so him doing well is really something that I like quite a lot. You know, right now Bomber's taking a gas, but I'm really curious about what Classic is going to do, because he, yeah. he has shown some of the crazy strategies you've seen in the GSL. He's also taking a gas right now, uh, a little bit later than you would normally. Yeah, Classic is definitely a player that has very interesting strategies. He proved that in a team league, and I feel that this is something that we might see in the third and second game, um, if it comes to that. We have him with a pretty harsh ratio against Terran, though. He has only 23% win ratio. He won three Ouch. games and lost 10. Not the best sample size, but still. A little bit of an indication that he really has a hard time in this matchup. He's going to see the gas here. Bomber did not do the depot wall to deny him. He needs to get the probe out, though, if he wants to save it. I was close. And you know, when you look at Bomber's statistics, Bomber is actually, in this matchup, it's his best. It's really good. He has a 71% win ratio Whoa. with 80 wins and 33 losses. I thought maybe like 63, but 71. 71, that's sick. And uh, just to give you a bit of an idea, he won against Crank with a 2-0 at Lone Star Clash. He took down Naniwa with the same score, was able to defeat Todd without dropping him up at the same tournament. He defeated Rain at the MLG Championship without dropping a single map to the strong Casper player. And the only Protoss in the last few weeks that was able to take a single map of Bomber was Daisy. Well, that's actually even surprising to me. By the way, he mined 100 and... He actually mined 106 gas, and that's all he's going to use here. He's going to make Hellions and Marines only, it looks like. Gets the reactor now as well. So, I'm really interested to see what he's going to do right now, because this statistic is... I mean, if you look at Classic's win ratio against Terran, Bomber's win ratio against Protoss, you would definitely say, okay, Bomber is going to take this series with the 2-0. But Classic is a sneaky player. He's yeah. a player who has shown uh, strategies that no one expected, strategies that no one thought he would dare to use. So he might be able to, uh, yeah, to cause an upset here. But so far, at least on Antigua Shipyard, he's playing things pretty standard. This is really interesting because he made the factory and the reactor 156 gas mine. Then he got, he pulled out Sigma so Expanser faster, but he's making it on the high ground. Now, on this main base, he's actually starting a tech lab for his factory. Looks like he's going to go into Siege Tank Marine to hold his natural, and then probably going to switch into standard play. I love this Hellion though. Right. Hellion is a very mobile unit he can use to scout yep. and check for this Nexus right now. I really like how he uses his economy. You already uh, just talked about it briefly, but he really wants to get only the amount of gas at the beginning that he really needs. Then he puts back on minerals so that he can get his command center out a little bit faster. And also the marines, and, when, and as soon as he has those, he puts back into gas and now starts his tech. Double command center even for him. He wants to play the long macro game here, while the hellion that you pointed out earlier is still there, still able to scout, having a quick glimpse, and of course Bomber is really interested now in what exactly Classic is going to do. Yeah, he really wants to know, so that's why he's keeping that hellion around. He can also actually run it in to try to snipe some probes. Yeah, he, he could. We have now two additional gateways being built. Actually, he's on uh, three, on four gateways. It looks like he wants to execute a bit of pressure here. Now he's got a probe in position to put a pylon down. That's what the siege tank is going to be really useful for. As soon as siege mode is done, any sort of attack that yeah. centers around gateway units, it's going to be shut down pretty hard. And you know, this is exactly the style that I would expect from Classic. Being a little bit more aggressive, trying to hit timings here that you might not expect as a Terran player. 
the, how, the Hellion at the top right is now doing a little bit of damage, trying to sneak in and get a few kills. One so far. Yeah, really nice micro by Classic, pulling his probes into different directions to minimize the damage. And these sentries that are being warped in would be great normally in a circumstance like this, but against siege tanks, they're not going to be so useful, and he barely didn't see the siege tank either, so he's actually probably still going to commit here. If that tank is on the high ground in siege mode, this is going to get shut down super hard, and I think it will be. A siege mode is almost done. There's even a second siege tank about to pop out. It will be done in time. It will be done in time, and then, of course, Classic moving in will have a big problem here. Bomber has the siege mode completed, but the tank is not sieged up yeah, just he yet. Yeah, siege. He's actually ready. He could siege. Now he does. He's a little bit late on that, though. Yeah, but on the other hand, the bunker is gone. He has no high ground vision. Classic, that is, and therefore the siege tank doing a great amount of damage. Needs to cancel that pylon. You know, yeah. this is... It, it just goes to show how one siege tank on the top can do everything. Even if you lose the bunker and you've got only pure marines. This is just... This... This is not going to work well I can't for believe you walked up there a second time, to be honest. With knowing the siege tank was there, you should have known as well that a second one would be out at any moment. You know, now he's especially, so he, I think he saw the second tank. I think he knew about it. So he's trying to pull it up with the Templar Archive, and I'm... Uh, uh, sorry, not with the Templar Archive, with the Twilight Council, of course. And, uh, well, what's he going to do? Trying to get bling, get an observer, trying to play a little bit with the T's, which is nearly impossible to make work here, especially against three orbitals. Yeah. It looks like he wants to go for bling, but the problem that I have with this is that Bomber's force is already way better. And it's going to be very tough for Classic to make this work. This attack didn't do anything for him. Yeah, it, it was totally useless. Now Bomber has, like you said, three CCs. He's powering up his barracks right now to get that Bioforce going. He's stemming a plus one for his Marines. But on the other hand, he even has these two Siege Tanks, which are always going to be used defensively, and it is going to be the Dark Shrine. I like the choice of Dark Shrine, but even, you as do? you said, against three orbitals, it doesn't seem to make sense. But does he even know that there are three orbitals? No, I don't think so. Yeah. He knows about two, but still, Dark Shrine seems to me, at this point, a little bit like a very desperate move. Yeah. It can I mean, be. You're right. It's totally desperate here. It can be a great choice, and uh, the Dark Shrine will help you later on, too. So you can always try to harass your opponent a little bit, or just send a few of the DTs in when there's a drop play, or anything like it. But the big problem is that if this doesn't work, what exactly is he going? What, what, what is going to be his, his his backup plan? Because it's not like he has a robotics. He has no robotics tech at all. Yeah. So if this doesn't, yeah, bear any fruit, then what can he do? Bomber can just walk across the map and take him down. Here's what he's hoping for. He's hoping that he can get in there and get lucky with very little scans going down, and that he can kill a lot of the army of bomber since bomber's army his bio isn't that heavily upgraded. Then he can follow up with a charge zealot attack and end the game after he's eliminated most of the army. He's going to try to kill units rather than SCVs, I feel. But I just don't see this really working. Here come the first two DTs. They will finish. But he's actually probably seen the warpen now and will save scans. He might actually have seen it already. Yeah, I think he's just going to save scans now and drop these depots. Need to raise the depots. He's actually going to go for workers. I did not expect this. I expect him to try to go for Marines without combat shields. And suddenly we have DTs not only at the natural but also in the main base. Bomber immediately with the first few missile turrets. But he's losing a lot more than I suspected he would. Now he's going for the army. I feel like this is the much better choice. You can kill Marines without combat shields so easily. He's even getting the siege tanks right now. Bomber doesn't have the energy to scan, does he? Yeah. Now finally the missile turrets are up, at least the first one is. And yep, taking down uh, the first few, but 12 kills already on one He's of these pulling. CTs. 24 in total. He's not reacting in his main base. That he, now he pulls suddenly. That wow. one CT already got, I think, something like 8 kills. 17 kills, actually. That was a bit different. Yeah, classic <laughs> makes me look silly here. I mean, this was... It's a big risk, but he took it, and, and you're so right. Nothing you said was wrong. In fact, he just got lucky here with Bomber's scan timings. And also, I feel... You know, he warped those CTs in right underneath Bomber's nose. So I would have thought, okay, lift the depots at your main base, save the main base, and now Bomber feels like he's all in. Yeah, but this is what the charge is for. He's going to try to defend here, plus warping in DTs for defense is going to be pretty useful. Hmm. Uh, does Bomber have any scans? His orbitals are actually lifted right now. Yeah, he has the orbitals everywhere on the map because he wants to use the scans now, as you already said, but he feels he's all in and he has to attack right now. He's moving in, he has the better army, he's down to 29 SVs though, and Classic, is he able to withstand this pressure? There's a lot of DPS for Bomber. Is it enough though? It kind of looks like yeah, it will be. It looks like it will be. You know, he didn't pull probes, Classic didn't. I think that was one big problem. 
And Bomber saved his scans appropriately, landed the orbitals and executed the attack. And Classic is now out of luck. He doesn't have enough units to defend. And even with DTs coming in, it's not going to be able to kill this horse. Yeah, there were too many scans already. Most of the DTs are gone. There's another one taking down the last two of them. And Bomber is just ripping everything apart here. Classic is now down to 40 supply. Bomber at 89. And there's the GG. Protoss player surrenders and leaves the game. A very weird yeah, imagine, mid -game. Though, imagine the situation where, and this is how I actually used to do this all the time when I was a pro so behind, because it's one of the only ways you can try to get back is if you send the DTs in one by one into that army, you start killing those Marines, you can kill. The Marines are so clumped up, you only have to run and chase them like you have to chase SCVs that are mining back and forth. You can kill so many Marines in these scans, and then you've got the other DTs killing SCVs, and then you pull off the SCVs after the first scan has gone and attack the army again. Suddenly that army is really tiny, then you attack with your charge zealots. I thought that's what he was going to do, but in the end he decided to go for SCVs instead. The bomber was like, okay, that's fine, you just spent a ton of resources killing my economy, and now I'm just going to walk across with my much better army and kill you. He was so far ahead in the army supply already, and also his tech was really decent, so he could take this chance and just try to attack. I was still a bit surprised how much Bomber lost to this. He could have handled this way better, and especially the units in the main base. He never really pulled the SCVs off the mineral line up to a point where there were already 20 kills on this one Dark Templar. In the end, though, his army is way too strong to defeat Classic, walks across the map, takes the opponent down, and now Classic has to find, yeah, has to find an opening to bounce back in game number two in Whirlwind. Yeah. Whirlwind is a very big map. I don't think we're going to see a gas opening from Bomber this time. We'll see. 